and we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'd like to point out to you, I'm showing you AET, but the first thing I want to point out to you is the listserv message that we sent out last December about uh, the state and American degree process. And so obviously you knew some of this so because you got on today's webinar, but the information about the American degree is in this listserv, and there is an intent form, and when you click here, it opens up the intent form, which I have one open. If you have not completed the intent, please do so. Um, that will give you the opportunity, us to get an opportunity to send your information to the section chairs. Section chairs do have to do a verification of your project and your record books. Um, if you had already filled out the intent, you would know that we gave you time and date choices. Since those have all been selected because we gave everybody multiple choices, now you can just type in what date and time works best for you and then please click Submit. The intent is not required, but it helps our office be very efficient in getting the information out to the section chairs for the verification process. So hopefully they, they can do your verification during um, your spring break or during a time that works well for you. So while the intent is not required, it is very helpful if you were to do that. It would also help us get you the interview date and time that will work best for you. So as you saw in the listserv, that is where the intent is. The other document that's important in that listserv is the American FFA degree information sheet. And I am going to, I have that pulled up as well, but you see when you click on it, it takes you to this Google document of ours. I want to hit the highlights here to make sure you have all read that. First thing it talks about is the intent. And we said we strongly recommend that. It helps us be very efficient in trying to get the information to you. It is not something that will eliminate you from being a candidate for the American FFA degree, but it is something that will help you and our office uh, be more efficient and get you scheduled for an interview that works in your schedule. Uh, other information that is important to you in here, um, your section chairs, as I said, will be notified and they will work with you on setting up a date and time to verify your project with your record books. They have an electronic form that they are to fill out. They have that form already. All they're waiting on is for me to, after the 15th of January, send them all of those who have turned in an intent. Then after March 1st, I will also send them an updated document of everyone who has submitted an American degree application. Um, the American degree selection committee, they meet, uh, we meet on March the 5th to review all American degree applications. And then shortly after that time, we will put out an interview schedule for everyone whose application made it through the first part of the process we will set up the personal interview. Um, so, and then at the interview, all candidates must bring their record books. So I guess there's three pieces that we want you to understand with the American degree process. One is that you fill out the application. We'll get to the application in a little bit. The application is due to our office by March 1st. And sometime between January 15th and April 1st, you will have your verification meeting with your section chair You'll have your application reviewed that you sent to us by March 1st uh, by the selection committee, and that's on March 5th. And then shortly after that, you will we'll set up an interview, and you will have a face-to-face, -face, or for those that cannot uh, make the distance to the office, you will have a phone uh, call interview. And so interviews with us, interviews with your section chair for the verification and the application. Those are essentially the three parts for an Illinois FFA member to earn their American FFA degree, or to be recommended, I should say, to be recommended to National FFA. Um, the application, the application is obtained through AET. We will go to that, or you can also go to FFA.org and, and hit participate. Um, today's webinar is also on this information sheet. Um, and we will go through all of these pieces that are on this deadline piece right here. We've already talked about the intent. We've talked about the selection verification committee. We've talked about the application. The application is, and it does require supplemental materials. I'll talk about that in a minute. But you're going to send us the original and one additional complete copy. So you make an original, and then you can copy that one double-sided and send that to us. But we need two for one for the committee to review the day that they're here on March 5th, the other one that goes to nationals. 
um, the original needs to have original signatures on it, and then you can make a copy of that, and the copy doesn't matter if the, the, the signatures are copied or not. But again, two copies come to our office. One is the original. The other one is a copy of that that can be double-sided. Those have to be um, that have to be in our office by March 1st. A March 1st postmark is acceptable, but we really prefer to have them in hand by March 1st because our review day is March 5th. Any questions on that? Um, sometime between the 1st and the 10th, we'll let you know about your interview time. The interviews are set for April 4th through the 6th. Um, we start the interviews about 8.30 in the morning. We'll go till um, 6. 6.30 on those first couple days. We try to wrap up by 1 o'clock, noon, 1 o'clock on that last day. Um, we also try to get candidates that are from the same area or going to the same college at this time uh, to ride together, so we'll try to put your interview times accordingly. If um, you if I put your interview time in or if you want to request something specific, you just need to put a Post-it note or a letter in with your application to, to request to um, have an interview time next to someone or with someone that you plan to ride with. Any candidate that uh, requests a phone interview, regardless of where you go to school, is fine. Uh, the phone interview request needs to accompany the application, or it needs to say that when you turn in your intent. But to be considered for any of the STAR areas, STAR American for Farmer Placement, Agri Science, or Ag Business, you're, uh, you must be present for that interview because there will be some additional questions and there is an additional commitment from anybody who wants to be STAR. Then from there, um, when you come in for that interview, as we already talked about, we will have copies of your application, so there's no need for you to bring an additional copy of your application, but you do need to bring in your record books. And then we will send out that, like you said, in March, between March 1 and March 10, we'll try to send out that interview schedule, and then um, you'll know your interview time and You'll have that notification there, and you'll bring your books in. If you are a phone interview, you need to arrange to have your books either dropped off to our office uh, by your ag teacher, by the section chair, at some event they're going to, um, a state event they're going to, or bring them to our office or mail them to us. But record books do need to accompany the application. We will notify everyone by May 1st of your candidacy for the American degree. Um, and then we will recognize our American degree candidates at the state FFA convention on Monday, or Tuesday, June 12th at the Bank of Springfield Center for convention. And then we also have an American degree dinner that's at the President Abraham Lincoln Hotel, which is right next to the convention center. Then in July, National FFA reviews all American degree applications. If there's any issues, National FFA notifies our office. We work directly with that student to get any issues rectified. And then in early August, National FFA will correspond with American Degree candidates directly um, about recognition at the National FFA Convention, which is October 24th through the 27th. Na American Degree Ceremony is in Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis on Saturday morning, um, October 27th. And again, National FFA corresponds directly with you. So that means the email address you have on your application needs to be accurate and one that you check because they will only do email correspondence about your American FFA degree, and you need to be checking that because they, they will correspond directly with you. Any questions about anything we've covered so far? Again, if you have a question, uh, just be sure to speak up on the phone or hover over the chat button and type something in. I'm happy to answer your questions as we go along. So the supplemental materials that are required, we do want a copy of your most recent, so the 2017 business agreement, training agreement, or partnership agreement that's from your record books. We want a copy of that. We also need a copy of skills and competencies and knowledge. If you have your old, this from your old state degree application, you can uh, print and copy that. You can copy it or you can print a new one. But that page also needs to come with us. If you click on this, there's a spreadsheet like this. If you want to fill that out, you can do that too. It's from the old state degree application. But either way, we do need skills and competencies and knowledge page, your business agreement. And then um, we need a brief description of your SAE, no more than half a page, and then describe your personal goals. So number three and four, you can put on the same paper. 
same page. Half of it needs to be a description of your SAE. The other half needs to be your personal goals, educational goals, career goals, where you'd like to see yourself or what you'd like to achieve in the next 10 years. So um, that is the supplemental pieces that must accompany an Illinois uh, FFA member's American FFA degree application. You might be going to school out of state and have friends that are working on their American degree in other states, and other states may not require this. This is something unique to our state. This is still what our Illinois FFA board requires our candidates to do. Um, and we're probably one of the very few states that still conducts an interview for the American degree process. But we still conduct the interview because we feel it's important um, to verify those American degree candidates, and it is the best way for us to determine who our star American candidates will be. So these are the supplemental materials. They must accompany the um, application. So once you put it with your original and you make a copy of it, they're also with the copy. So make sure that those additional pages are attached at the back of the American degree application. Um, any questions? No letters of recommendation from advisors are needed. No picture pages are needed. This is what is needed, the application and then these supplemental materials. Okay, if there are no questions about um, the American FFA degree candidate selection procedure, that document, again, is for your viewing, but, um, and we've talked about the skills companies page, we talked about procedures, and we've talked about the intent. Those items, I'm going to check off the list, and we're going to move into AET unless we have any questions. Moving into the application process. So I'm going to log in as a regional um, staff member, and I'm going to go to degree application and manager, and this shows me our American FFA degrees. And this shows... Um, a lot of them that are already in progress. Um, I'd like to have a sample one. Let me see if I can find an old one. Claire, do I have permission to open up your application? Yes. Well, I would say that, but I don't see yours here. Oh, yeah. You have yeah, I, I haven't started on it. Sorry. Okay. Uh, JC, do I have permission to open up your application? Go for it. Okay. All right. So um, just a couple things. The instructions page, what I just clicked on with JC's app, um, they are – you can read through them. They're going to tell you things that you do need to know. The nice thing is this document is saves as you go. Um, and the best way to maneuver and manipulate through the document is to hit the tab button. So hit your tab key to move through it. Um, you must put in your beginning and your ending dates on the basic setup page. Um, there are no decimals in this application either. And it will not print without saying draft until you have all the mets and all the yeses to qualify for the American FFA degree. Um, that's the instructions page. If you want more instructions, you can always hover over the blue circle with the triangle, the little play button, and it will give you a video. The green question marks are probably one of the most helpful tools in the American app. If you filled out our state degree app, well, none of you would have filled out the state degree. Well, some of you could have filled out the state degree application last year. Um, that application has these green question marks. It gives you a description of what's needed in that box, but then it also gives you examples of what to put there. So the green question mark is very helpful. The cover page, um, the, because you're filling this out and it, it should automatically populate your chapter number and your ID number, and, and then you can see JC has gone ahead and completed this information in here. Um, this is all information that you type in yourself, and as, you, as it all gets typed in, well, like, except with exception of down here, Chapter Advisor, because that's already assigned to the FFA chapter and ID number that JC has. But anything that is a, is a box in here, you can type on yourself. Um, then membership check, it does have, it says MET. It means JC has been a member in all the years that um, it should be. If it is incorrect, like if it says not MET, if you started an application last year and you're using that application, 
you need to start an application for this year. So you need to either get rid of the previous one or refresh that one so that it is this current one, because otherwise it will say not met. Because it needs to say continuous membership month up to 12-31-2017. So if that happens to say not met for anyone, just make sure you have started an application that has this year. Basic setup, this is where you put that beginning date and ending date. Those are very, very important because that will pull information. If you have any records in AET, it will pull information from that, but it also shows the qualifying years for the American FFA degree and it allows you to have that many years on your application. Um, for those of you who have easy records or paper books, the white pages that have your finances and expenses, this is where the information from those pages goes in, is on this basic setup page. So when you are looking for the cash on hand, checking and savings, your first year record books, go to your white pages and look for those numbers and that's where you will put that information here with your first year of your record book. And then the last year of your record book, again, you're looking at the white pages if you're easy records or paper book. And that's where those numbers will come from and they, you plug in all of those numbers on this page. First thing I need to tell you about an application like this is through AET, any yellow box that's like this that you can click on, you can type in. Oh, and I need to type in numbers, see? Well, that's a good thing to note too. If I typed in a letter, it wouldn't let me do it because only numbers are appropriate here. So um, be sure to look at your white pages and find those values. A couple pieces that I want to make sure I hit on with all of you. This, uh, this bottom section here, Section 5, Personal Care, Cash, Income, and Expenses, if you hover over the question, it gives you examples of what a cash gift is. It gives you an example of sources of cash from non ag-related non-SAE and personal earnings. So this could be babysitting, this could be non-ag work, this could be ag work that's not your SAE. Those earnings need to be placed here. Total personal draw is... Um, your income taxes, your payroll taxes, um, anything that comes out of your payroll if you're a placement student, those that goes here. This also is where it says meals, entertainment, and other personal expenses. This is when you buy something for a um, girlfriend, boyfriend, and you it's a big item like a promise ring or something crazy like that. Uh, that would be a personal expense that would go here. So your personal expenses, you may not have that itemized, but you need to have an approximate idea of how much that has been. Again, that should come from those white pages, but one thing to note in our easy records and in paper books, we've never asked you to itemize that to a great detail, so you may have to be doing some figuring on that for your books. Any educational expenses you have would go on this line right here, 5 e One of the things that you need to understand is the ending value date that you say you have on cash on hand, checking and savings, um, that value needs to be shown throughout the book. So it's, if you've earned the money um, from your project, regardless of whether you're a placement or entrepreneur, you've earned that money, and if you haven't shown that you've spent that money or invested your money back in within the project, and at the end of the book, the, the, this ending value doesn't match what you have in your book, they're going to show that there's a discrepancy. So you may need to really look at where did I spend my money or did I overestimate what I actually have in cash on hand, checking and saving. So this, this application asks that you match up penny for penny what you've earned based and then what you've spent or what you still have. So whatever you've earned over your years needs to match with what you say you still have on hand and what you've spent. Is that clear? Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, then we'll get into JC's entrepreneur um, pages. So JC, I think will you want to talk about? Can I do something with animals first? Sure. Did you have animals? Yes. Beef cattle. Okay. So beef cattle. So beef. And he. Ha I'm gonna. I'm gonna make numbers up now, JC. So you don't have to. We don't have to worry. But we will delete this. So he had nine head of. Or he had no. Let's say not head. Let's say nine spears, and they were bought at a sale barn. We're making stuff up here, kids. But he's going to click on add, and then you're going to see the nine spears bought at a sale barn and in his project book. So for every year, you select the year over here. 
So in 2017, he had beef and he has three cows, one bull and 12 heifers. Again, made up, he hits add and it puts it there. So one thing I do want to note is the more description you put in this description box, the more likely you are to have a, a more detailed book and a more detailed book is going to have a greater chance for or, uh, application a greater chance at being selected at star and then having greater star potential out at national ffa so we want an extremely detailed description of those three cows one bull and 12 heifers or those nine steers from 2013. so we need to put in information for each year in your project if you have something and again this is you pick your pathway whether it be plant systems or animal systems we also know that jc has some um, forage and then he's going to tell me how many acres and then he's going to give me a really nice description blah 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 and he's going to click add and it's going to be there so um this page and this is the page where your committee actually learns about your project and has a better understanding of what you actually do so again the more description you can put here the better the committee is going to better educated the committee is going to be in selecting their stars and nominating people for their american degree so, does anybody have any questions on adding data into this application? Okay, so then we get into the um, income and expense page, and this is kind of a no-brainer. This is in your um, in your record books. This is your, regardless of what books you're using, we all you all have um, income and expense pages. This is where that information needs to be transferred. One thing I want to make sure I note is that again if you hover over a yellow box you can type in that box if the box is white there's no typing in that box i clicked on the box and it showed me where that information came from and it's back here on our current inventory page okay because this big this closing current inventory and beginning current inventory that all gets put on this page right here so income and expense statement um, again if it's a yellow box you can type in it if it's a white box you cannot so um, one thing I want to make sure we note is that oftentimes when um, FFA members have livestock, they may have a heifer that they value at a certain amount on their inventory page, and then that heifer might appreciate in value or it may be more valuable to you because she becomes a cow. And when that happens, you can put the value in which she increases in 1F, and then you transfer it down to one or four B. Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to put in um, information. Apologize. I just threw myself off, JC, because I was trying to put information in your application, and I really I can imitate you, but I don't have permission to put that stuff in there. So I do apologize for that. So I could put this one thousand dollars here that I say she increased in value, and then I'm going to say in four B that that's where it transfers. So animals can, quote unquote, appreciate or they can increase in value to you because of you know what they now are capable of doing or what they've done for your enterprise. And the way you do that is you put it in 1F and then 4B. Same way is if you trade labor, you can read here it says labor exchanged or bartered. You put the amount that your parents may have paid for feed. And if they paid for all the feed, you have to put the amount they paid in in that 1F line because that's what they're saying they, that your labor traded was for and then under um, 2, um, 2 D, that's where you put the value of what they paid all that fee for. So um, that's how you use those lines. If anybody has questions on that, feel free to ask those at this time. But all these values come from your income, expense, and receipts pages from your record book. So now we move on to inventory pages. Um, we have the harvested and growing crops. And um, this yesterday I used this for the sage degree. Let's say JC had horseradish and he had um, 100 pounds. And that was what he still had on hand. Um, he clicks add and then that goes into his values. Um, We'll delete that here, JC. But anyway, this is where you put any uh, harvested or growing crops you still have value on, 
here, this is where you put feed, feed, fertilizer, chemicals, these are all current inventory. So any uh, crops or animals purchased for resale, any raised or marketed market animals are here. So those nine tiers that he had before, that's where you would put uh, their description, the quantity, and their value. And you would click add, and that would pull up in an inventory, and it would show on this inventory page right here. And you can see now, all of a sudden, we have that $5,000 of horseradish that I'm claiming over here. Um, we're going to put uh, feed. Um, Nick not, yes. I have a question, um, Mr. Claire. Um, so with my record book, since it's uh, beekeeping, what would you do like for like honey? Where would that go? The honey, like that's a store that you still have on hand. Yes. I would say that would be a harvested crop. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So as I put the beef animals there, now all of a sudden those fourteen thousand dollars worth of um, of bees there, and um, then we're going to go to the non-current inventory page, and this is where non-depreciable draft pleasure or breeding animals go. So that cow and bull we talked about would go here. Um, depreciable, um, actually, depreciable animals could be the cow and bull there as well. Then you have your machinery and equipment, your land improvements and buildings, and then your land. This is where all of that information gets entered. And again, it will show up on this income and expense page, but it gets entered in your inventory pages. These are all yellow boxes, so you can type in there and click add, and then it will put a piece there. Again, description, you can be as lengthy as you want to in your description so that it, it increases your chances to earn the American degree, but also to be recognized as one of the potential stars. Assets page, these are all white boxes. Nothing um, gets typed on these pages. These are just a summary of everything you've typed on the three previous pages. Same way with the liabilities page. But if you want to know well, where does this number come from, it takes you back to you noted, you noted liabilities on this page. So anytime you're looking at the assets or liabilities page, you can click on a value and it can tell you where it came from. And it takes you back to there's that $9,000, that's where it's at. So that's nice to know if you can't figure out you know, what a number means, click on it and it will take you to the page that it came from. We're gonna click on the net worth page and um, you are going to see that um, these are all white boxes, so nothing can be type in here either because um, they're all white boxes. It is all drawing from um, the balance. It's all drawing from the first page or the income expense statement or the ending current value or, or current inventory or non-current inventory. So all of these, again, are drawing from another page. Productively earned and invested page. Again, this is not a place where you can type anything in. It gives you a summary. Um, but it does show that yeah. Okay, maybe not a question, maybe I was just hearing things. So you can look and see, you can earn your American FFA degree one of three ways. You can productively invest at least 7000 and earn 10000 which according to the numbers I threw in JC's mock app, he has met. Um, or you can do productively invested at least 2000 earned 2000 and have unpaid hours at at least 2000 It does need to be noted that on the American FFA degree, you cannot use entrepreneurship hours to earn your American degree. They have to be unpaid um, placement hours to help earn that degree. Entrepreneurship be, should be counted in the profit and loss you have with the project. That is unique with the American degree. With the state degree, we do allow you to use entrepreneur unpaid hours to earn the degree. The American degree does not, so I do want to make sure I notice, note that. And the third way to earn the degree is productively invest 2000 earn at least 2000 have your unpaid hours um, and productively invested at at least 10000 or unpaid hours factor and SAE earnings at at least 10000 So those are the three ways to earn the American degree. The next page is community service. Community service is much like other items. You click the year that you did the service. You click um, UCC Church and the funeral meal. And you put in 
80 hours, and we click add. So now we see, well, he met the, his 50 hours, but he's not met because he only has one activity. So if I put in UC every time, and I put in funeral meal server every time, I'm going to put in another 80 hours, but I'm going to do it in 2014. Add. It says not met. Why does it say not met? Because it's the same activity. And I can't type, obviously. I misspelled something. So now we're going to say he worked for um, county cleanup and cleaned roadside. And he did 12 hours. And we we'll hit add. And then all of a sudden it says met and met because he has at least three different activities. Does anybody, I'm going to clean these up and delete these out of JC's application, but does anybody have any questions about that? One thing to note with community service, National FFA does police this subject or this um, this category more than you would think. Um, and they do want to make sure that you have your over 50 hours and that they are three different activities. And it is actually community service and it's not a volunteer and cleaned up my neighbor's yard. It, it, there's a difference between volunteering and community service. Community service does need to be community service. So do make sure your community service meets that expectation. Here's the checklist. We can see that JC has met in a lot of ways, but why doesn't he meet on community service? We click on it because there's nothing there. It's just all, all that all remains the same. Back to the Back. checklist, there's a not met. The candidate has not has obtained required electronic signatures. We go to not met. And, and this is new this year. So um, the, the, uh, uh, the signatures can be submitted electronically. So the student puts in their name, the date they signed, so you put in that date, and um, and then you click submit. So the only time you can get this, so let me do this, let me go back and fix a couple, one more thing so that I can show you this. Sorry, I, uh, yeah, okay. Should have left those in, shouldn't I? Her, her funeral, 80. Church. Okay, so we have three activities. We have ours. Okay, now look at checklist. Now, um, it's, now I click on this candidate signature. Okay, now I can do this. I can type in JC's name, the date he signed it, and then if I click Submit Signature, then that would count as his signature. So that is something new this year, and you do need to do that, but you can't do that until all of these on the rest of these on the checklist say, uh, say met. <laughs> Any questions about that? So then there's your electronic signatures page. And then when you go to print the application, it'll let you open it, but it's going to say draft because the signature page isn't hasn't been signed. So we did take that. I'm not going to sign this for JC until he actually completes it. But this is how the application itself would print out. And this is and this is how you would go about printing or um, printing it off and then be submitted to us. What questions are there about the AEP application or anything in this process? Again, if you have questions, hover over the chat and type in a question or ask them over the phone. I'm echoing for somebody. I do apologize. But um, I do want to thank you guys for calling in. It's very helpful. Wait, we have questions. All webinars will be the same. So, yes, all webinars are the same. And um, we are also going to post this webinar once I'm done. Uh, we will have this recording, and we'll take this recording and post it on our YouTube link. 
and I will also send out the YouTube link in a listserv. So um, if you came in in the middle and you think you missed something, you can listen to this again, or and, and when we post it on um, the YouTube link, or you can call in again. Our other webinars are uh, next Wednesday, 17th, and next Thursday, the 8th. Any other Any questions? Thank you, Mandy. Yes, okay, so we had a really good question. It says, if we have an issue with our application or run across questions, will you have access to our applications like I did JC? Yes, that is one of the, that's one of my favorite things about AEP is that I can be looking at your application or your advisor can be looking at your application same exact time you are and I can tell you where to put numbers or where, what numbers I think may be off. And so that is very, very helpful um, with the AEP application. And one thing I will notice to point out to you is if um, on this network page this said not met and things didn't match up, um, you're going to need to go back to that basic setup page and see what you have and cash on hand, checking and saving. And again, it needs to match up with what you say you earned with your SAE and what you spent. If it doesn't, then you need to either adjust your spending or adjust what you say you have at your ending value or adjust the numbers that you say you earn. But those numbers do have to match up dollar for dollar. That is a, a snag that a lot of students will run into and I will help talk them through that over the phone. So yes, I have access to view all applications with you while working on it. And I am happy to answer your questions. And I know your advisors are becoming more and more familiar with this process as well. So they too can take advantage of looking at your application um, at the same time you are, even if you're in another state or um, not able to come in and meet with them face to face. So any other questions? Again, I want to thank all of you for calling in. We will get this uh, recording posted and um, hopefully others can benefit from the webinar. But thank you guys very much for calling in or logging in today. If you have questions, don't hesitate to email me. Um, that is also in this procedures page. My email address is there as well as the FFA Center number and my extension right here. Nice, highlighted in gold so you know how to find it. Okay. Well, with that, I'll say goodbye to everybody and thank you so much for calling in.